Good morning. Um, so I am Catherine, the seminary intern this year. And um, today we're going to celebrate scripture in a little, in kind of a different way. I love scripture, the Old Testament, New Testament. I love it all because I hear it as one cohesive story about one God and the same people. And I believe that we are not that much different from the Israelites. So I pray that we can hear ourselves and see our world in the scripture reading today. To give voice to this, uh, the reading for this morning will be read as a script with Damon reading for the prophet Samuel, Gretchen reading for God, BJ reading for the narrator, and myself reading for the people of Israel. You are welcome to join me in reading for the people, though we do ask that you remain on mute for logistical reasons. <laughs> Let us prepare our hearts for scripture this morning, coming from 1 Samuel chapter 8. When Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn son was Joel, and the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah, and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us, like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of 50, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give them to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day, you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, we are determined to have a king over us so that we may also be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice and set a king over them. Samuel then said to the people of Israel, Each of you return home.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be glorifying to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever gone looking for something, thinking that it would solve your problem or satisfy a need, and then realize that what you really need is actually something entirely different? Like sometimes, I think I'm hungry. So I grab a bag of potato chips because I love potato chips. And I live alone. So why get a bag or why get a bowl when a bag is just a really big bowl, right? And I can munch away happily for quite some time. But once I lose track of how many times my hand has reached into the bag, I realize that what I really need is water. Yet, even when I realize that I'm thirsty, for some reason, my hand just keeps gravitating toward the bag of chips. <laughs> and sometimes I feel so tired that I think I need a nap, but really what I actually need is to get up, move around, stop looking at my computer and see the light of day. Does this kind of thing ever happen to you? Today, we heard a story of Israel choosing the chips over a drink of living water. Today, we hear a story of the people sleeping instead of opening their eyes to the light of the world. In the story we heard today, we drop into the era before the era of kings over the nation of Israel. Before there were kings, there were judges who God appointed to lead God's people. But even as the judges led the people, God reigned over Israel. We have a whole book of the Bible that tells us what life was like under these judges. Honestly, it was a mixed bag. In the book of Judges, there are some hard stories, some brutal stories, and some stories that give us a mirror to the pain that humanity causes one another. In this passage from 1 Samuel, the people express their dissatisfaction with the leadership of those judges. But instead of turning to God as their true leader and guide, they ask for a human king to take God's place as ruler over the nation of Israel. I think this hurt God. God set Israel apart and the Israelites asked to be like the other nations. They didn't want to be God's people. They wanted to be like everyone else. This is like a punch in the gut to God. When Samuel expressed his concerns to God, God responded, listen to the voice of the people and all they say to you. For they have not rejected you. They have rejected me from being their king. The people rejected God. How often do we reject God as our true leader and guide? Since even before the time of Samuel, we have looked for earthly authorities to take control, to protect us, guide us, and fix the problems of our society. We looked for a king and God said, let me be your king. God has offered over and over, let me be your father, your mother, your counselor, your friend, your shepherd. But we keep looking for a king. The people of Israel demanded a king and God said, you don't want a king. They will take advantage of you and make your lives miserable. But the people kept demanding a king, even though God was already their leader, their sovereign ruler who loves them, who wants them to have freedom. I don't even think that the Israelites knew that God was their ruler because they kept looking for someone 
who looked like them. They usurped God's reign and gave it to Saul. And God obliged. God listened to the people. God does not force God's self upon us. God does not force God's self upon the world. But God keeps showing up to give us the chance to choose God. Throughout scripture, God's people kept looking for a king. And there were more bad kings than there were good ones. And we hear the echo of God's voice say, you don't want a king. Let me be your king. But I will listen to you and give you what you ask for. Then the days of the kings passed for Israel. They suffered under the empires of Assyria and then Babylon and then Persia and then Greece and then Rome. The people of Israel kept looking for a king. They kept looking for a king who looked like them. So God listened to the people and God humbled God's self and became truly human. And God walked among them through Jesus the Christ. On the day we remember as Palm Sunday, the people of God waved their branches and believed that they were finally going to get the king that they had been praying for all that time. They expected Jesus to end the reign of the Roman Empire and be the king of the Jews. Yet, when Jesus wore the crown of thorns, the people rejected him. Even though Jesus looked like them, he did not look like the king they wanted. And the voice of God echoes on. Listen to the voice of the people. They have rejected me from being their king. from the early Israelites, the people on Palm Sunday were finally ready, or they thought they were ready, to ask for their Lord to be their king. But even then, they weren't ready for what Christ's reign would really be. Christ's reign leads us in holy resistance against the systems, institutions, and politics that govern us. Christ reigns with compassion and justice and grace. When we claim Jesus as king, it is not to say that Jesus is just another extension of the patriarchy ruling over our lives. No, Jesus meets us where we are. Yes, Jesus came to us as a king, but also as a child, as a sibling, as a teacher, as a healer, and as a friend. Christ relates to us in dozens of ways. My point is that if you embrace God in your life, however you relate to God, then I believe that God will meet you there. Maybe God will not come to us in the way we expect, but I really do believe that God meets us where we are and is willing to engage grow, and be with us in an everlasting covenantal relationship since long before we were born and forevermore. To me, that is what Christ the King Sunday means. It means that when Christ ascended into the heavens, Christ did not stop accompanying us. The opposite is true. Now, Jesus doesn't have to choose between being in Jerusalem or in Galilee. Christ can hold the whole world in Christ's own hands. The people didn't see how Christ's earthly pacifism could end the rule of empires over our hearts, or how Christ's resurrection would free us from the tyranny of death, or how Christ's ascension would be an invitation to lift our eyes to the heavens and remember with every sunrise and every sunset that Christ our King reigns. 
the kingdom of God has already begun. It is not complete, but it has started. So where does your allegiance lie? Yet, even while God truly reigns, earthly leadership still matters. Leaders on earth can determine what is acceptable in society. Leaders can determine whether people live or die. Leadership determines whether people are oppressed, abused, even killed because of the color of their skin, whether a person's sexual orientation or gender identity determine their rights, or whether asylum seekers remain camped out at the southern border. We have to value good leadership in our communities, nations, and world because they matter. But no matter who they are or what they do, our mayors, our representatives, governors, and presidents are not and can never be God. This means that whoever is in charge, we must be wary of them becoming our idols. They can have our votes, but they cannot have our devotion. That conversation that Samuel had with God in our scripture reading is a conversation that we continue to have today. Are you still looking for an earthly leader or will you let Christ be your guide? Today is Christ the King Sunday. May Christ transform how we think about leaders and rulers. Today is an invitation to shift our allegiance from the powers that be and look to the true power that is, that reigns, that loves, that waits for us to join in the promises of the life to come and the kingdom that God is building now. All glory be to God. Amen.